Hello everyone, um, I figure it's time that I do a tutorial on Character Creator importing to ZBrush and re-importing the clothing armor back into Character Creator for use in either Unreal, Unity or in iClone itself. So we're going to start with a new project. Um, I believe that I want to start creating a, a male type of armor or clothing. Um, so let's start a new project. Well, we've got a new project here, but let's uh, grab a male base. Um, just the default male base will do. Feel free to follow along uh, along the way. At the moment, it's just our character creator to ZBrush. We'll be starting to um, get the model sculpted and a few of the cloth sculpted, well, created. Um, and yeah, let's uh, send it over to Gozi. Um, I want to use. I want to use the current, the current pose, um, but I will be using uh, the T-pose as well for the actual clothing around the torso and arms, because importing it back in as his current stance, it creates issues, but I'll go over that later. So let's uh, send him over to ZBrush using the current pose. Go. Let's start putting him in. Edit. Uh, the first thing to do when importing into ZBrush as well through the Go Z is you want to go to prefer because the brush size is right. Yeah, everyone should know this by now. But the brush size is very small. You need to go to preferences, draw, push that max size to 500, and the dynamic brush size to 10. And then you'll have uh, your option to get yourself a bigger pose there going on. And also, we don't use a standard brush at all, really. I just, uh, majority of this is just using the, the move brush. Uh, so we've got our, you can get rid of that because I'm not going to re import the correct beginning. I pose. I um, also want to bring in a T pose, so let's uh, bring it back in and let's bring in another one and not use the current pose. He'll come in with the T pose, delete the tongue, let's name that uh, T pose. Um, you just want to go to your other, your main document, and let's uh, pen this and bring in the T pose as well. For now, the T pose. So we want to like get the T pose sort of, well, sort of lined up roughly you know, in the same spot. Doesn't matter. Um, I'll show you why I'm bringing that in later. But for now, we will not be using it. So you can just go ahead and hide it. And let's just use off the A pose. Um, the other thing to do is also um, figure out what you want to actually create. So I've gone and had a look and tried to get an idea of what I want. I found this uh, this pretty cool looking um, little leather armor coat type of thing. And I figured I may try do something like that. Well, basically, I, I have no no idea what I'm really wanting to do. Uh, the way I, I model is I just get in there, I start doing stuff and see what comes from it. But you want to get yourself a sort of an idea of what you want and then basically trying to replicate that as well. But you've got to give it your own twist. I um, also found this shoulder armor here that I, I really like this armor. So with the combination of that armor and the shoulder piece, I started to think maybe I should do some sort of Templar. Um, because that's a very, very similar sort of thing to the Templar. Now, 
I don't want to do a, an exact Templar. Um, I want to give it a fantasy style, so not your original type of Templar, but you need to get ideas of, of what what you're wanting to do. See, I like the Templars with the shoulder armor on it. I don't... I'm not a big fan of the the plain... plain t that one I like too. The plain Templars... That's yeah, alright, let's get the thing there. Um, the plain Templars like this, without having any armor and stuff, it's just... it's uh, pretty boring to me. Um, that, that's got, yeah, some shoulder armor. I just don't like that armor, though. It's not, you know, the fantasy style I'm looking for. Um, probably not going to end up doing something as good as that. That looks pretty damn good. Um, uh, we're going to try to keep basic. I like the look of this. This is, well, obviously it's a Templar, but well, it's a Pathfinder game or something. Uh, I like that. That looks pretty cool. But maybe we'll give them like a double shoulder. Or maybe even one shoulder. But that looks cool too. Like, you just need to draw your inspiration from somewhere. I really like that one. Could give him a hood. Not totally sure. Um, so basically what we're going to do to start with is create... Start getting the... idea of what we want. So with that in mind, let's go in and start building some pieces. Now, the gauntlets and the... the boots I will do do later on. I won't start getting the bases just yet because I need to get the underlying things first. So let's see, the this armor is built up of there's a uh, chainmail shirt underneath the the white cloth that's over the top. Um, and then there's pants and a lot of those pants are chainmail pants but I think I think it was something more like this here where there's just normal leathery or fabric pants. So you've got the chainmail here, and it's coming down. You know, that's that's a full chainmail shirt. The chainmail shirt is pretty long. They go down uh, just above the knees. Uh, that'll be underneath. It also looks like he's got some other cloth underneath that too. Now, I'm not sure if I'll do that. Or just have just the, the chain mail shirt as a base underneath. And then under that is the legs, and then over the top is the cloth. So then the shoulders over the top of the cloth and the armor. So for now, let's just start getting a the bases for the chain mail shirt underneath the overcoat shirt drapes. I'm not exactly too sure what that's called. Uh, the armor pauldrons and the legs. Uh, so let's go into ZBrush. Now we want this armor. So obviously, the chain mail shirt. Like I said we'll come down about here. So we want to get. Now, the way I do things is I basically just take it off from the actual character. So let's uh, duplicate that character and we'll call this uh, the chain mail shirt. shirt. Now we've got that. We can... Uh, we want to basically remove the head. Now, I'm not the best at doing this type of stuff. I'm pretty pretty basic with my knowledge of ZBrush. Um, so I can do that. I want to like just... Uh, we want to grab that one and put a select like so. Now we can... It's not doing what I want it to do. So we'll 
do it the easy way then. To remove it. Not easy way, but we'll just uh, split the groups. Then we can get on here and delete that because we don't want that. Uh, what's that part? That's his toenails. That. Uh, the head, we actually want to fully delete the head. So now we've just got the body, that's exactly what we want. Uh, let's merge them all together again. Now, now with that, let's uh, go to geometry, zero remesher, and hit same. And you want to remesh that to get some polygon shit. That's doubled up here. So let's get half. Half will get you almost the same shape. It's not doing really what I want it to do. Okay. Polygroups, auto groups, merge. You want to just, just group, group all of it by mast. I'll put it all together. Now we're not getting the remesher that we want. That's not doing what I want it to do. This is because I broke them. Alright, so let's just scrap that one. Let's create another one here. Without it splitting it apart. Yeah, that's, that's what you want. So we can get the Shema shirt here. And that's great. So we can go over here. Uh, have the shirt come around maybe here. So we'll zip that hole there. Uh, you hit the edge with the uh, select lasso, and it will cut the whole poly, poly group, the poly loop off, which is what we want to do. Uh, see this here? It's not the right sort of shapes that we want. Yeah, we're gonna throw it here. Um, I'll be pulling that mesh, stretching that mesh down to create the. Just cut it here. Uh, see this? There's no real great loop here. Yeah, that is not the best of loops. So what we want to do is maybe zero mesh that again until we get the geometry that we're sort of looking for here. Huh. First, let's do. Um, you basically want to geometry modify topology delete hidden. Let's turn these into polygroups. Uh, you can uh, click that one in the middle. Uh, it should delete it, but let's just give this one. So we can delete the hidden mesh here again. Now let's see if we can get a better. Well, there's plenty of other ways to do this also, but I like doing it from the low poly because if you've already got the polys there, if you start doing it using like a higher mesh base and then you have to go through and uh, retopologize it all again, it's just very, very difficult. 
um, and a lot more time consuming. So hopefully um, you'll notice that this actually works out to be a lot faster, well it does for me anyway, with my actual knowledge of a ZBrush. Um, have a It's not grabbing the polys how we want them to go across there. Oh, that's that's much better. So we can do that and rip that off, and we can fix the rest of that up later. So now you want to um, poly group that. Auto group it. Grab this one. See it. Grab that. Delete it. Now we've got a shirt base. Uh, don't forget to remove the hidden mesh, which is in modified topology in the geometry, delete hidden. <coughs> uh, excuse me. So we've got we've got a shirt is what we have uh, at the moment. Turn that on underneath. You'll see you know, the shirt there. Let's um, go to deformation. Go to inflate and inflate that a little bit. Just keep sliding it across. It'll inflate it out above. That'll do for now. Um, you can grab your move brush. Uh, for now, we're going to keep everything symmetrical, and uh, we'll fix that up later. But you want to maybe. There you go, that's, that's down nice enough with a straight angle. Uh, you can just move the stuff around a bit here. It's back. Arms, that, that will fix later. Doesn't matter if you get some mesh poking through, that is all fixable at a later time. So you want to just try to get, get the mesh shaped for the shirts. Yeah, you got that thing in the back there. We kind of don't want the muscles hanging out much, so drop your intensity for your smooth down a fair bit and just smooth it out. By just building the base slowly. The base shape. Obviously, you can do all of this in. Um, Marvelous Designer as well. I've, I've never really used Marvelous Designer. I've got ZBrush, so I might as well just use ZBrush. It seems really good and powerful of a tool. Uh, you'll find that I jump through a few different programs t while I'm creating uh, content as we go through. Okay, that looks... Uh, let's push that up, pull them down a bit. Now I'm gonna show you how to get that down a lot further to his waist. Um, so let's go to uh, go to your brushes, go to Z, hit up Z root Z modeler, and we want to hit the edge. Um, Move edge. Non non symmetrical. What are you non symmetrical for? Um, get it symmetrical. Just go to modify topologies, mirror and world. There we go. That obviously give it a bit of. Um, yeah, I'll fix that up later. For now, we want to just pull this down here. Uh, we want the whole the whole lot to pull down. Ah, so this will probably be the easy way to do it. Now you just grab that, then we can So just uh yeah, let's remove that. Uh, we'll go to we just we want to mask it so 
mask mask that bit there let's go around it's nice uh, switch it to the opposite by just uh, control and click on the screen it switches uh, now we can just grab that and just stretch it down uh, give it out a bit so give it sort of like a skirt um, give it back a bit too uh, we'll, we'll pull all these uh, out a bit later how far do we want this um, this chainmail shirt to go down personally I don't think I want it to go down too far Having the chainmail shirt drop about there should be enough, I think. Yeah, all right, so let's just uh, click the draw, s switch out that. In zero, go to the zero mo um with the zero modeler. Let's go to add, insert some edge loop completes, and we will just. Insert edge. Why are you not doing it? This is one reason I do not like working in ZBrush. It's just doesn't want to do what you want it to do half the time. So what we're going to do uh, with this right here, I'll show you quickly. We're going to take it over to um, 3D Coat and I do a lot of our topology work through 3D Coat and um, it's it's really great, powerful tool and very basic. I use it for multiple reasons. So let's, um, we want to export. Now I've got my file set up here. Um, let's create a Create a folder called uh, Templar. We want to, and then inside that folder, create some more folders. Uh, this one is going to be the chainmail shirt, and let's actually call it the chainmail shirt. Um, open up 3D Coat. Now, when 3D Coat opens, uh, just go new, pop up this window. You want to uh, perform retop retopology. From import retopo mesh, import retopo mesh directly without reference. Uh, it is useful when you want to just correct its geometry and reuse retopo tools for low poly modeling. Okay, grab the Templar chainmail shirt, and you see it comes in, comes in just uh, as a, re a topology, uh, not the actual like it doesn't show the model. Um, what we want to do here is, we're going to delete these here, I don't like them. They're the ones I told you that we'll fix later. Just go delete the actual edges. Um, you could do it from actually, take the bottom one and then do the rest. And that, that fixes up your topology issue right there that you had. And let's... Let's make this uh, actually full. So we're going to drop this one here. We're going to just add a few more and then we'll delete the other ones so that the topology looks great the whole way through. That's That way we've got a full poly loop that's not interfered by anything. Um, we can probably remove those, but let's keep them there for now. This is, as I said, there will be some like, um, there's some mesh stuff here. Doing shirts is usually better um, using the uh, depots, um, but for now we can just talk with this, and I'll show you how I fix that up later, um, the, and show you the issues that come with it, with the mesh being, you know, poking through the actual mesh. Uh, here, we want to give uh, some rings. So we want to just add some more loops in here. Split rings is great. Let's just try get them roughly the same size. All the way down. And one more. It's okay, there's a little bit extra down on the bottom. So that we can come in, we can add, remove, and get rid of any of them um, at a later point in time. That 
looks great for the base of the chainmail shirt. Um, so you want to, uh, at this point in time, you do not need to start doing UV maps and so forth because it doesn't really matter right now. Um, if you want to, you can just add your, you can, let's, let's add, that's the right one, about, about here. Uh, maybe put the scene there. And where's that one here, that one? Put the seam there, then you've got um, probably going to do some seams here. Although I can't see where those seams are because it's like poking through. Uh, there we go. So if you want to add seams, you could definitely do that yourself through here and this. That's another reason why. Yeah, I can't get to that seam. The reason why it's very difficult to add seams through this way. When the mesh is not, you know, straight out, you, you have issues of trying to find your spots you're looking for. Uh so we do that one there and that one there. And we've got a mesh. Um, do a quick rundown of this is uh, edge loop unwrap now that will unwrap all your edges um, or you can manually change these as well the positioning if you to get your layers that I'll show you later so let's just um, unwrap and pack the UV I'll show you later how to manipulate them and what issues can arise if your UVs are in um, the wrong angle. So let's export it back out to the chainmail shirt, uh, get back to ZBrush, import um, while having the chainmail shirt open. All you have to do is import chainmail shirt, um, core triangles, that's fine, and it overwrites it, overwrites it right there. So I think maybe that chainmail shirt is probably too long as well. Um, we'll go ahead with that later. This is just grabbing the the basis of everything. Let's go to the move brush and let's uh, fix up a bit of his mesh around his butt. We sort of want that like just hanging over. It's a shirt, mm, more so like a skirt at the moment. Chainmail skirt. You won't get your instant, yeah, instant um, outcome from the beginning. It takes time. You have to get through it, and you just need to start building, building your bases and so on. Um, I want to like bring them in a bit to just like poke it too far out for my liking. It's looking like he's got too much of a actual skirt going on. So, I may, I may remove some of those down the bottom later. Uh, I don't want to like pull it too far. So we sort of want this, this shirt needs to be sort of tight because it's going to be the underlayer for the other one that's sitting over the top and yeah, you get it a bit tight. But I don't do, it's like pretty, okay. Um, start with that. That's the shirt done. Um, I'll probably continue going for a little bit longer. Uh, let's see if we can get the... Um, uh, the pants. Pants, pants are basic and very, very easy. So let's hide that one. Um, duplicate this. Uh, let's call it, uh, trousers. <sighs> trousers, um, we want it from up here somewhere. That's actually got a pretty good, uh, ring around here as it is. So if we, let's 
remove this whole ring here. That's probably a good base for the the pants to start. Um, polygroup, auto group, different groups. Let's get rid of this one and go to geometry. Uh, delete hidden mesh. So, uh, so I want to uh, bring the pants maybe here. Possibly, possibly want them to go a bit lower or even higher, depending on where the boots sit. Uh, like I said, we'll do those boots later. This will be a long process. deformation and inflates and my Z brush just crashed. That's not cool. Ah, oh, that didn't save the pants in. Or oh, the other mesh. Great. You'll find that this is so fun sometimes, but the cool thing is we've already got the Templar chainmail shirt there ready to go. See? Um, let's just fix that back up. Yeah, let's uh, fix that back up now. Sorry about that, don't know why that would want to crash. Doesn't crash very often. So I'll fix that back up a bit. Oop. Uh, yeah, make sure your intensity for your smooth is down a fair bit because you'll get it just squeezes it right in. Um, yeah, it does look too much like a skirt. Notice here, there's that little bit right here that's poking out. Something happened here while importing that mesh. Uh, for now, they could stay there. Um, I'll fix that up later next time I take it through the 3D coat. Um, well, actually, I might leave that there, and um, we'll start off with the pants in the next episode, and um, hopefully, possibly do the the overcoat skirt thing as well. Uh, thank you for watching, and uh, stay tuned for more tutorials coming soon. We, like I said, if you want to um, follow me through this process, you can join in. Um, start creating your own as well, and we'll see how it goes. If um, just make sure that when you're doing it, um, use your own imagination while creating things. You don't, it doesn't have to be the exact same copy of what I'm doing. Um, just experiment, see how it goes, um, and let's have fun. Thanks, guys. Okay, just to follow up on the the um, Zero Modeler and the 
insert edge. Now, I had a complete brain fart and I was looking at the inset, not the insert. The inset multiple loops, single loop works completely fine as I'll demonstrate right now. So you zero modeler, click on the edge, uh, make sure you have insert connect, insert selected, not inset. Insert single edge loop will give you the desired results to just insert those edge loops as I showed you in uh, 3D code. You can do it within ZBrush itself. Just as long as you don't have brain farts like me, um, that is totally doable inside ZBrush. Uh, and that's it for now. Uh, next episode we will be going over the uh, pants and I'll do the uh, coat as well. Um, as you can see, it's not... It doesn't really look like much now, but the end result will hopefully look a lot better. I do not know how this will go. It could turn out to be a complete dud. Um, I do model a fair bit of stuff, and then some of the stuff I just look at, I'm like, well, that's just crap, and just scrap the project and start something else. Uh, but hopefully this will, will turn out good. Um, but we we'll, won't know. We'll, we'll we'll find it together, and hopefully, uh, hopefully it does work out good. Thanks, guys.